yes, we are very, very good at making money. We, yeah, we, we are we very good work ethic. We're smart. We're quick. You know, we get things done. But when it comes to the business side of it, it's like, ah, eh, I'll deal with that later. And we can't yeah. be like that. You yeah. have to address it now. It's going to save you a lot of money mm-hmm. now. You know why, though? It, it all goes back to mindset. Right. You, you can't go to corporate level right. and you still have a hustler's mentality. Right, right. It That's doesn't true. work. It That's doesn't true. Work. I like that. <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Mm-hmm. You have to shift your mindset in order to get to new levels. You have, have to, to be willing. Right. Yeah, you have to be willing and open to embracing new tacti- tactics mm-hmm. and methodologies mm-hmm. in order like to advance it. yourself and scale your business accordingly. So stop being a hustler and run your business like a business. Yes. <laughs> Go, Marjorie. Hola, hola, mi gente. It's another beautiful day, and I am having the wonderful opportunity to speak with someone who's going to help us with business taxes. Because yes, it is that time of year. We need to understand the keys to making sure we can not only make money in our business, but grow and protect ourselves when it comes to tax management and planning. So today I have on the lovely Marjorie McPike. So let me bring her on. Hi, we. Hi, yeah. All right. yeah. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I am great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you. Doing good. Doing good. Marjorie, you have no idea how excited I am to awesome. have you on today. Awesome. Thank you. That That's cool because a lot of people don't want to talk about what I like to talk about. <laughs> But you know, honestly, I think a lot of people would be interested in it if they understand the importance of it. Mm-hmm. Right. A, a lot of people don't. And before we even get started, though, I have to say, because you mentioned it, I could not agree more. Let's all think, first of all, Erica, because without yeah. Erica, we would have never met in person. Yes. Awesome. Shout out to Erica's Classy Climb Tour. Yes. yes. Washington, yes. D.C. That was so awesome. I was thinking about that today. Oh, I had a ball. <laughs> it was a great conference. It, it was, was a great conference. Great so yeah, conference. shout out to Erica. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where I was able to meet you in person, Marjorie. And Marjorie, yes. you gave such a wonderful speech and presentation in regards to tax planning for small business owners. And Thank that's you. why I said I have to have you on. Because Marjorie, mm-hmm. accounting, CPA, all that stuff, that sounds like Greek to me. <laughs> and you have a gift of breaking it down and making it so simple and so clear that I have to have you on. <laughs> <laughs> so Marjorie, here's my first question for you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Super okay. simple. Mm-hmm. How long have you been practicing as a CPA? I have been a licensed CPA since 2007. Wow. So I've been working in public accounting since 2003 and I have always worked in bookkeeping and accounting all my entire career. Hmm. Now, here is the follow-up question to that, because I think a lot of people don't know. They always basically call everything under one umbrella, and they think one is the same. What's mm-hmm. the difference between bookkeeping and accounting? So bookkeeping is more of the day-to-day transactions. Okay. Accounting is more of analyzing those transactions, reviewing the records. So, so you start out with, you know, just your day-to-day transactions, you know, recording your deposits and your disbursements, you know, in your accounting system. That's more bookkeeping, making sure that you have all your receipts in order, you know, um, you know, filing the receipts, paying the bills, making the deposits, that's the bookkeeping. Then the accounting part of it is analyzing that and reviewing it and making and preparing financial statements. Okay, good night. Mm-hmm. So which th- one is more time consuming for you? Which one is more time consuming? Yeah. Um, well, you figure the bookkeeping is the day to day. So that's going to require more time by the individual that does it. So whether it's done by, you know, a CPA or a bookkeeper or the individual, you know, business owner themselves, because you're looking at the day to day transaction. So you're recording and you're categorizing every transaction that your business makes. So if you make a deposit, it's not just the deposit, you know, for revenue, it's, is it paying an invoice? Did you bill somebody and they're paying that invoice? So you have to match all that up, you mm-hmm. know, are you tracking your accounts receivable, um, tracking your accounts payable if you're doing it that way. So it's more detailed, the bookkeeping is. 
Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Here's one thing that I always appreciate about the information that you share on mm -hmm. social media, which is you always share the importance of understanding the basics of tax planning. Right. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> So I, I like to say it's, I, I say it's understanding, understanding the basics of tax planning, but I want people to understand their taxes overall. Mm. So I want you to understand what it is that you're recording, you know, what your bookkeeping looks like, make sure that you're doing the bookkeeping, what it is that, you know, the person's going to look at when they're looking at your financial statements, you know, your balance sheet and your profit and loss, you know, make sure that you as a business owner, or even an individual has a basic understanding of that information. And then understanding your tax return, right? <clears throat> we all prepare tax returns. We're required to file a tax return on the income that we earn so that you under, so I want people to understand that what is on that tax return and what makes up the overall, you know, balance due, refund, liability, what makes up that. And then that all play, goes into tax planning because tax planning is looking at what you are making, what your income is, what your expenses are, your anticipated deductions, how that's going to look when you file your return at the end of the year. Mm. So, so you're looking forward. So it's, it's planning. <clears throat> you're looking forward to see what it is that you're going to have to pay or what your liability is going to be and seeing if there's a way that you can make some legitimate deductions or changes so that that liability is less or that, um, you know, it could even be so much as, am I withholding enough for my paycheck for an individual person? You know, mm -hmm. did I make a lot of money? Did I have a lot of capital gains, you know, that I didn't have in the prior year? Did my business make X amount, you know, more money? But you're actually looking at what it is that's going on so that you can plan for that instead of just preparing your tax return and then you're surprised. If that's the case, then at <clears throat> what point or how often should someone be looking at their finances in order to modify and or create those plans? So you should be looking at your finances monthly. Any business owner should should have monthly bookkeeping or accounting services, whether it's prepared by, you know, yourself or you have an outside service that's doing it for you. And what you're doing, because think about it, you, you get your bank statement. <clears throat> same with an individual, right? You should be reconciling your bank statement on a monthly basis, right? You should be. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> if, if on should, yes. So you, you should be. So it's the same thing with the business. So you're looking at all of the transactions that went through your bank account for the month, you know, your credit card transactions, make sure that you're capturing all of those, you know, transactions that everything that you did for your business in the month has been recorded and you understand what's on your return or understand what's on the report. So then that way you can know if you need to make some changes, you know, you don't have to plan on a monthly basis. It's more like a quarterly basis, but you still want to be looking at your bookkeeping monthly but on a mm. quarterly basis. And we say quarterly because that's when estimated tax payments are due. So you want to make sure that you're paying in enough per quarter to cover what your anticipated tax liability is. Okay. And see, just by that simple statement, simple yet powerful information packed answer you just gave me <laughs> is why I'm asking you the next question. Okay. In this day and age of social media and the internet in large, actually, let me do my let me do my um, my CNN reporting voice. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for this? Um, according to the Census Bureau, four point four million four point mm -hmm. four million new businesses were started in twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. Four point four million businesses were started during the pandemic. Right, That's fantastic. To mm -hmm. me, I think it's a testament to the beauty of this country. To be honest. Right. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. we both know that the average new business does not last within the first five years. By the mm -hmm. zero to five years, a lot of these businesses are going to be closed. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of that is due to not their front office action, not because they're not making sales, but they don't have a money team behind them. Their back right. office is a mess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't recognize that they need a CPA and they need someone knowledgeable like you mm -hmm. to make sure that they can grow and scale. Right. So my question to you is this, Marjorie, at what point in someone's business journey mm -hmm. do they need to invest in hiring a CPA? That's a good question. Um, 
because you you say invest in hiring a CPA. So keep yeah. in mind that there are there are different levels of um, how would you say so accounting professionals, right? Gotcha. So you may not need a CPA because you're because a CPA is going to charge you more, right? A CPA mm -hmm. is a certified public accountant. A CPA CPA has to have a bachelor's degree in accounting. Um, has studied and passed the CPA exam. They have to go through ethics courses. They have to keep up their CPE. So they're, you're going to pay more for a CPA, right? <clears throat> so you want to make sure that you have an accounting professional that is going to help you. Okay. So your budget may not allow for a CPA on a, on a regular basis, uh -huh. but you want to have someone involved that's helping you, whether it's a bookkeeper, whether it's, um, just a tax preparer. You know, you want to have someone that's helping you. It, I recommend that everyone start out. You know, it's easy to build a business on a good foundation. Yes. Right. So if you're going to start in business, then know what's required. Set up your entity like it's supposed to be set up, whether it's an LLC, an S Corp, um, a partnership, a corporation, set it up correctly, obtain your EIN, open a business bank account, set up an accounting software and start tracking all of your transactions from day one. Gotcha. It, it makes a difference um, for, for a couple reasons. One, because you have the information right up front, right? Mm -hmm. And so you can always build and scale. So you start your system. You may not have a million dollars in sales, but if you, if you develop good systems and routines, when you have a thousand dollars, it makes it easy to scale up to the million dollars compared to getting to the million and you have no systems and you're having to go and backpedal. Mm. Right. Plus yeah. the fact that the way businesses are, are increasing their revenue so quickly these days, you yeah. want to be able to know, Hey, I made a thousand dollars in this month, but wow, it jumped up to $10,000 this month. Oh, but it jumped up to $50,000 this month. Oh, I need to make some changes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I need to look at how my entity is structured. I need to look at, should I be doing something different? I need to look at, you know, how do I take my money out of my business? So it's good to start at, at the beginning, start the beginning. And, and even if you work with the CPA, I mean, I offer a service. I have a community. It's $19.99 a month. You know, yes. I have a CPA on call where it's $100 a month. It's not that big of an investment, but it's going to be worth your time to have someone that's walking with you through every step of the way. You want to develop that relationship. Exactly. I'm so happy you said that because I was speaking to my sister prior to this recording and I said, you know, I'm so excited to speak to Marjorie tonight because I have so many questions <laughs> regarding this because mm -hmm. my sister and I always talk about the fact that in life, you will always have stress. That's just mm -hmm. how life is. Yeah. Like you have a choice of what type of stress you, stress you experience, but stress is always going to be there. Mm -hmm. There is what's called you stress, good stress, and there's distress. Right. And the same what goes with money. Right, right. Money will cause some form of stress. The mm -hmm. question is, what type of stress do you want to cause? Mm -hmm. Do you want too much money problems or you want too little money problems? Right. And it's the same with when it comes to being a business owner. Do you want IRS money problems? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or do you want, how do I allocate all these funds problems? Right, right, right. And then with the IRS, <laughs> you're, you're making money. The IRS is going to get theirs. Right. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you're giving them the least amount that's possible yeah. legally. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, how are you? What deductions are you? Um, are you are you capturing all of your deductions? Do you know all of your business expenses? Are you do you have all that information readily available to you so that, you know, someone can look at it and say, hey, OK, well, you made this much money. This is what your liability is going to be. I've had many situations where um, people. I've done past year returns. So we're doing 18, 19, 20, you know, tax returns. Wow. And I'm having to pull teeth. It's, I keep seeing pull teeth, but I'm having to drag the information out of them. Okay, well, what did you what did you use for your business? What did you spend? Did you drive your vehicle? Did you use your cell phone? Did you have any, you know, subscriptions? Yeah. You know, it's like it shouldn't be like that. Someone with, you know, a CPA can help you more if the information is available. It's like mm -hmm. we can we can start thinking about how to analyze or how to how to find other tax deductions or, you know, strategies if we have all the information compared to having to sit there and pull it from this account and that account. And yeah. And then you're paying more money for that. Right. <laughs> I can tell that came 
from your soul there, Marjorie. <laughs> <laughs> because it's hard. <laughs> and, that, and that's one of the reasons why I, I do what I do, yeah. you know, is because I want people to get it. I want you to understand that you can do so much more if you have the information available. If you if you keep track of it day to day, it's like run, it, my motto, run your business like a business. It's a business. Mm. Run it like a business. You okay, know, I want to pause there and I want to backtrack. Okay, okay you, so I get going. Run, <laughs> I know, <you're> feeling it. <laughs> However, I want to backtrack and ask you this though. Okay, mm -hmm. you said we need to build our business on a solid foundation, mm -hmm. and what I am hearing is the basics that everyone should be doing is making sure they're tracking their expenses. Tracking their expenses. So that means that, correct me if I'm wrong here, we need to create the habit and mm -hmm. systems of tracking our expenses. So that is the best first step every business owner can do. Is that correct? Yes, I like it. Habit and systems, yes. Yeah, habit and, and systems. Mm -hmm. So please, what are some good healthy habits that we can start now? And if you, what are some good systems if you choose to share? Okay, so good healthy habits are, <laughs> keep your business and personal separate. Oh, we're getting into the mingling conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go there, Marjorie. <laughs> Keep your business and personal separate. If it's a business expense, run it through your business account. If it's a personal expense, run it through your personal account. Mm. Don't mix the two. Okay. So that's a good habit to have. Have a, a separate business bank account. And again, run all of your expenses through it. So, so just, just get in the habit of anything that's related to business, put it in the business account. If you have a subscription to Canva, to, you know, whatever, yeah, whatever, Let's there's so many platform. things. Yeah. Right. If you have a subscription to that, have it go through your business bank account, you know, so that you can keep that information separate. So and it, it serves two purposes. One, you can see on a monthly basis how much you're spending on these services because they're all coming out of that account, right? Mm. And two, I forgot what the second was, but two, <laughs> it just helps you to see on a monthly basis if you're making money or if you're not making money. Yeah. And then that's how you know what you need to cut back on or what you need to improve, you know, what you need to change. You know, this is working for me. Hey, I made, you know, two thousand dollars this month and i did these activities so so that kind of thing so that's a good habit reviewing your your reports mm -hmm. you know on a monthly basis so looking at them just kind of going back to what i was saying so reconciling your bank account so those are good habits to have um systems you need an accounting system okay um there are there are three common platforms that i know of there's zero which okay. I'm not totally familiar with. I'm actually going to get a subscription to that one. Um, there's Wave, which is a free system that um, I have a an account with that I'm kind of playing around with that one just to see what it is because everyone wants free. People don't want to spend a lot of money on things like that. And uh, I Okay. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. And I've heard people say that, but I, I, I also push back and say, if you want to make money, it's, it's an investment. You have to, and you have to be careful when you choose to go cheap on. Right. I think people are going cheap on the wrong things mm -hmm. and it's leading mm -hmm. to their detriment, but that's just my soapbox. Carry just on. <laughs> <laughs> carry it, on. Is, it is an investment, but I would rather have someone have zero than have nothing at all. Touche. Because you can, you know, take your zero account. Is it zero I'm talking about? Wave. Wave, wave. Wave. Because you can take your wave account and export that information and put it into QuickBooks. Gotcha. Um, I have not done it, but I know that it can be done. Okay. So um, <clears throat> so I'd rather have them have something. So that's a good system. Keeping track of your receipts, you know, when you purchase a, something for your business, um, you know, take a picture of it and save it digitally so that you have it and then categorize, or not so much categorize them, but keep them say by month, month and okay. year so that you have it if you need it to look for it. And a lot of companies now will email you your receipt. So okay. you just have to develop, a, you know, just add a folder in your email and move your receipts to there. Okay. Now I have a follow-up question to that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep it really raw and 100 with you. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of business owners who are listening to this and they are so, they're so co-mingled. They're married. They're not, <laughs> they're, they're married. <laughs> Marjorie, what mingle. So, 
Okay. So how does one begin the process of detangling <laughs> and that unmingling? Mm -hmm. That's question number one. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll go with question because I also have a follow-up question. Okay. Let me answer that question. Okay. Go for it. You just have to stop doing it and just start switching okay. everything to your business account. Okay. You know, um, if, if you have something that's been commingled, you know, you can still pull out those expenses, but it's easier if everything is in your business bank account. Yeah. You know, you can, you can, at least if you're purchasing it for, for your business and it's coming through that account, it's going to have more validity, validity, you know, than if you're purchasing something for your business out of your personal account. So say for instance, you know, you go to target and you buy some supplies, right? Because yes. people go to Target, right? If it's in your business account and you're always running all your transactions through for your business through there, it's going to have a little bit more validity than you're saying, hey, I bought this at Target. It was for my business, but it's on my personal account, mm. right? So you yeah. want to give, I say, the appearance and fact of running your business as a separate entity. And that goes down to, to, um, to the reason for forming an entity. So if you have an LLC, or if you have a corporation or an S corporation, how is someone else supposed to treat your business like a separate entity if they come to sue you if you're not treating it that way? Ooh. Right? Wow. That's the purpose of a legal entity. Ooh. Right? Yeah. So, She's so you want to. Bar. Yes, Marsha. <laughs> <laughs> She's coming in with the heat tonight. <laughs> Now with that, I'm also going to say this, many people start their businesses and there is one myth that I want to squash here, which is mm -hmm. a lot of people believe that they have to have a lot of money to open a business checking account. No, you don't, you don't. And, and it doesn't have to be with the particular bank. Any, most banks will open a business checking account. Um, you just have to provide the information that they require to show that it's a business. You know, sometimes if it's, if a sole, if, if it's a sole proprietor, they may let you open it with your social security account, or they may want to have, you know, an EIN. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's just showing that it's a separate entity. Of course, for an LLC or an S corp or corporation, you're going to have to have the EIN, but it doesn't cost that much to open a business bank account. No, it's a couple hundred bucks. I, I don't even hundred. know if it's that much. Yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely mm -hmm. right. Even less mm -hmm. than that. Yeah, I don't. Even, I mean, I I opened an account recently, um, and they let me open it without any money in it, and I just had to make sure that I put the money in there at a certain period of time. Ain't that something? So yeah. And I don't know if it's because I had a relationship with them, you know, because I have other accounts there. But and even like some some credit unions, you could open an account with five dollars. So yeah. don't let that be the reason I why did not know that. five you know, bucks. Some credit wow. unions. <laughs> so you, you just pay the membership fee. Wow. Mm -hmm. So don't let that be the reason why you don't open a business bank account. It's like let's not buy. Let's stop finding reasons why we can't do things the correct way and start just figuring out what we need to do and do it because there are benefits in doing it that way. Mm. Now, before we go down that road of benefits, I want to backtrack here and mm -hmm. ask you this because someone's going to say, well, if I open my business bank account, the first, the seed money is going to be my own personal money. So let's mm -hmm. pretend that I have already set up $5,000 aside that I want to use as mm -hmm. the initial capital for my business. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like? So I transfer that money, that 5K from my personal account to the business account. But what does that look like when it turns, comes to uh, bookkeeping? You're going to have cash in your bank account and you're going to have equity in your business. Okay. In English? No, that sounds okay. <laughs> <laughs> and in English, that is? If I met you at Target, you explained to me like well, it's, it's Like you said, capital. It's capital in your business. It's an owner's investment, right? Uh-huh. It's so, an owner's investment. So I am personally investing as into, your uh -huh, business. Yeah. into my business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and you want to keep track of that. Some people will just put money into the business. Some people will, will pay for things before the business actually gets started. Say, for instance, if you're going to form an organization, you know, you, you have to do that with the state. So you have to pay a fee. Yeah. Right. So you have to form your entity, obtain your EIN, then open the business bank account. Right. So those activities that happen before you open the business bank account, you had to pay for that. So you can either put the money in, you know, or, you know, saying, OK, well, I put this money in the bank or make like a journal entry. But you want to be able to show that that's your investment because that has 
other implications down the line. Some entities you have to have basis in order to take out your profits, right? A what? Or your losses. So you have to have basis. So it's like your basis in in the business. Can you use another so, word for basis? Capital investment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, so some businesses, some business structures, you have to have an investment in the business before you can deduct the losses on your tax return gotcha. because they want to say that you're getting your investment back as a loss. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. And gotcha. then say at the end of the time, when you get ready to sell your business or transfer it or however, if you have more investment in your business than the business is worth, then that's a loss, mm -hmm. right? So you want to make sure that you're keeping track of those things. Got you. And what I'm hearing over and over and over again, what you say is tracking, 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 tracking. tracking. <laughs> There's it's so true. much. I'm learning tonight. There's so mm -hmm. much headache that can be prevented if we are making sure that we are accurately tracking our transactions. Tracking our transactions, knowing what's going on in your business, knowing, knowing where the money is going, where it's coming from, how to record it, how to report it. You know, um, you can go out and you can purchase, say, a building, you know, let's just say, <laughs> let's say like a real estate investor, right? They can go out, they can purchase a building. It's like that needs to be needs to be recorded in your bookkeeping system a certain way so that it gets treated correctly. Mm. So you could have a land portion, you could have a building portion, you know, you have depreciation that you get to take, take account of, which is not a cash transaction you know it's a non-cash expense so it's important to to get all that information to your cpa your bookkeeper whoever it is that's helping you so that they can properly prepare your returns and properly properly reflect that on your books because again that's going to affect how it's going to affect the tax down the line right if it's a rental property you know you have this building that's an asset if it's yeah. a flip it's like a cost of goods sold. So it's treated mm -hmm. differently. So you want to make sure that they have that information. Wow. So, oh, this is so powerful, Marjorie. Oh, this is so powerful. Okay. As you know, as a tax expert and accounting expert, um, there is so much power in understanding tax law. Mm -hmm. There's so mm -hmm. much power in it. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to the wrong people, they'll all love to say, oh, woe is me. I get charged so many taxes. Oh, these business owners, they don't pay any taxes. Oh, they're stealing. However, they have a team that That's understands true. how tax law works. Right. Is that correct yeah. in saying that? Yes. And everyone should have a team. Mm. Even if you have, if you have a bookkeeper, because I, I tell people, you know, um, like I said, a CPA is going to be more expensive. Right. So even with my service and I keep plugging my service, but my CPA. Yeah, because I want you to. Yes. <laughs> so we're having you on, Marjorie. Yes. <laughs> yeah. even, even with my CPA on call service that I offer, there's no bookkeeping included in that. It's a 15 minute conversation per month. Right. Mm -hmm. And we are just going to, you know, we may take a quick look at what's in your books to see if everything is OK, but we're not going to be doing a deep dive in deep dive into it. So there are other people, you know, even if I was to come and do the bookkeeping for you, that's a service that I offer. Um, but we're going to be making sure that all of the transactions are recorded correctly, that we have all of the documentation that we need at that mm -hmm. time. And we're asking the right questions to make sure that we're categorizing things correctly when it's fresh in your mind, you know, because it makes a difference if you're doing something, you know, in January, but the expense happened in, you know, say April, you know, yeah. it's easier to get that information in April or May to make sure that that transaction is recorded, you know, correctly. Mm. So, and there, there, like I said, there are other people, you know, there are some people that just specialize in bookkeeping. There are, you know, companies that you can get off of Upwork and Fiverr and, you know, all of those different things. But the important thing to know is that you need to make that investment. You need to have your team. You need to know what it is that you're working with. You need to, you know, trademarks are big these days, mm -hmm. you know, um, copyrights, just, you know, making sure that you have all of your contracts in order. It's like, you need to make that investment. Yes, we are very, very good at making money. You know, yes, African-American culture. I'm just going to go there. We, yeah, we, we are we very good 
work ethic, we're smart, we're quick, you know, we get things done. But when it comes to the business side of it, it's like, ah, eh, I'll deal with that later. And we can't yeah. be like that. You yeah. have to address it now. It's going to save you a lot of money mm -hmm. now. You know why though? It, it all goes back to mindset, right? We, ultimately you cannot build, <laughs> you can't go to corporate level right. and you still have a hustler's mentality. Right. Right. It That's doesn't true. work. It That's doesn't true. I like that. One. <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You have to shift your mindset in order to get to new levels. Right. Now there's certain aspects and ethics about it. Yes. That worth ethic, ethics mm -hmm. should always be there, mm -hmm. but the tactics and methodologies mm -hmm. have to go away. You have, have to, to be, away. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be willing and open to embracing new tactic tactics mm -hmm. and methodologies mm -hmm. in order like to advance it. yourself and scale your business accordingly. So stop being a hustler and run your business like a business. Yes. <laughs> go, Marjorie. <laughs> That. We're gonna I am going to tweet that. Yes. That's the problem. And that is so that is why I am thankful that we're having this conversation now. Mm -hmm. Because people think there's so many people who think that number one, I'm a small business owner, I cannot afford a CPA. Yes. Or I'm a small business owner. I'll, when when I get the money, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a lot of when I get the money, then I'll hire someone to help me with the money. Right, right. When they don't know that if they had a woman like Marjorie in their life, she can teach you how to track and set up things so you can mm -hmm. have a sound foundation. So yes. therefore, not only can you handle the money you have now, but you are in a position to scale it. To scale it. Right, right. And that's a big part of it too. It's like, I'm, I'm willing to teach, you know, it's like, I would rather teach you how to, you know, set up your QuickBooks, how to categorize, categorize your transactions, how to look at your financial statement. I don't expect you to know everything, even how to look at your tax return. It's like, I don't expect you to know everything. I don't expect you to know the tax code, but I expect you to know that, Hey, you're telling me that I owe $20,000 in taxes, but I only made $20,000. So how is that? Right? Yeah, <laughs> that, that's what I expect you to know. So I am I am willing to to help to teach however, you know, you want it to be done. You know, so, there are things that I'm working on as far as challenges, as far as, you know, webinars. It's like whatever you you guys have an idea you want to get together. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm open. So I'm going to ask you the million dollar question. Mm -hmm. uh, Marjorie. Why are people rolling around in G wagons? <laughs> <laughs> Because they tell them that it's a tax deduction. <laughs> Why should have to go to the G wagon? Because <laughs> and and it it is a tax deduction. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's something that you're using for your business, right? Yeah. So business, you know, deductions, business expenses, they must be ordinary and necessary for your business. Mm -hmm. Okay, Can for you your business. Again? Yeah, repeat that again. What? Ordinary and necessary for your business mm -hmm. and not extravagant. Okay. So you can have, you can purchase a vehicle and use it for your business. Okay. Okay. Um, whether it's a hundred percent deductible or not depends on the weight. It depends on the, the percentage of usage in your business. So there are, you know, there are some factors that go along with it, but you also want to make sure that you're using it, that it, it it's, it makes sense. Yeah. For your business, right? Like I was talking to someone, I was like, okay, yeah, you run a, a fully online business, right? Y you don't do anything on the ground, but you have a G wagon. That's a business expense. It's like, ah, oh, how? <laughs> <laughs> so there may be a way that you can, you know, you can have a different business yeah. and use that as a business deduction, but you want to make sure that it's ordinary and necessary for your business. So I'm going to walk down that road with you and I'm going to ask you this mm -hmm. for people. Let's pretend that I am a beauty blogger, right? So mm -hmm. I have a YouTube channel and I have a platform and I talk about skincare and beauty care. Mm -hmm. Would my weekly facials be a tax write off? It could be if okay. it's ordinary and necessary for your business. Okay. For someone okay. with like a beauty brand. So, but, so someone who has a beauty, beauty brand, you know, or if you are an influencer, if you make money by, you know, 
walking around and showing off what you have, that that may be, you know, a reason for something to be a deduction. It's a business expense. Wow. If it's ordinary and necessary for your business. And I and I say your business because every business is different. Okay. You know? So okay. you have to, you know, the IRS is going to look at it as if the common person or someone else in that business will be doing the same thing, you know, but it has to be ordinary and necessary for your business. Hmm. I mean, for me, I'm a CPA. So it's like, okay, I'm going to get a facial every week. That's not a business expense. <laughs> <laughs> But here's, here's my thing, though. You are a CPA who is also an educator on the Internet. You show your face all the time. You're on camera all the time. Having a facial, having clean skin is a part of your professional presentation. Do you see where I'm going with this? I see where you're, I see your, I see where you're going with this it. That's actually a personal question for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on camera. I'm on camera talent. No <laughs> it's no different than a Hollywood actress. Soap opera, soap actors get their facials all the time. I'm just saying, Audrey. I'm just saying. How much money are you generating from this business? <laughs> well, let's pretend that I was generating, I don't know, 20K a month. If you're generating 20K a month and you having a facial makes a difference and you generating that 20K a month, I would be like, okay, I, I could probably, that would be something that I would consider. Okay. But if you're telling me, no, I just need this because I go online because this is what I do. Then I'm like, no, I don't think so. Maybe somebody else that says differently, but that's just me. <laughs> but I appreciate that. I was trying to go get a facial today. <laughs> I'm nothing without a good facial. I am I'm no good. <laughs> I have to tell you that I have a girlfriend and I've known her for about 25 years. And she goes like every month and gets a facial. I'm like, why do you do that? I don't get it. Blah, blah, blah. I went and had a facial about a couple months ago. I'm like, man, what have I been missing? <laughs> You're a new convert, aren't you? <laughs> I'm Marjorie. Welcome to the skin side. <laughs> Like, yeah, I gotta do this more often. But yeah. It is. It is. <laughs> it was but very nice. See, and those are the perks. See, those are the perks. But I also want to continue down this road with you because the other aspect I've seen also shared over and over again is mm -hmm. oh, as a business owner, you can write off so many things. You can write mm -hmm. off this, you can write off that. I write mm -hmm. off this, I write off that. At what point, Marjorie? Because it sounds to me depending on who says it, that they can be skirting the line of write-off abuse. I abuse. Don't know the right term. Mm -hmm. What's you the can. term? What's the correct term for that? Um, We can call it write-off abuse. I'll have, <laughs> to, <laughs> I'll have to think of a term for that. <laughs> but, you know, you, you don't want to, um, you don't want to go overboard with your deductions. Yeah. Because there, there are things, like I said, it can't be lavish and extravagant, right? Mm -hmm. You want what's ordinary and necessary for your business. So if you're preparing your tax return and you have on your tax, you know, you have say a hundred thousand dollars in income, but you have a hundred and fifty thousand dollars in deductions, you know, and one of those is, I don't know, it could be travel, you know, yeah. $50,000 in travel and Twenty thousand dollars in meals, and you know all that kind of stuff. It's like that's that's a red flag, right? Yeah. The IRS is going to question what is this, and then you're going to need to have the documents and the receipts in order to substantiate that that deduction, and you're going to have to prove what makes it ordinary and necessary for your business, mm. right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, and is it true, true or false, that if someone attempts, mm, true or false, is it true? that if you try to write off too many things, I think you just said that, you can actually cause a red flag for an audit, it's, right? It, they, they have like, like what appears, what's normal, gotcha. you know? Kind of like what's normal for your industry for gotcha. this type of expense, right? So it's not saying that it's not an actual expense, but you want to make sure that you can document and substantiate. You want to make sure you have the receipts in the documentation as far as why you went to that, you know, had that expense. Gotcha. Now yeah. I'm so, oh, Marjorie, 
I cannot wait to learn even more about this. And mm-hmm. I know that you have an opportunity for other people to learn about this because you have a community, right? I do have a community. Mm-hmm. Can we talk a little bit about that? We can talk about it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Now's the time to talk about it, Marker. <laughs> so um, I do have a community. Um, I don't even know what it's called. It's in my... <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I'll put it in the show notes below. It's in there. Um, but and, and, and keep in mind that the things that I do, it's because I want to educate exactly. small business owners on their taxes and their bookkeeping and any information that I have, I want to share it with them. Yeah. So I do have a community on Facebook. Um, I think it's Marjorie L. McPike CPA Bookkeeping and Tax. Mm-hmm. Um I do offer it as um, <clears throat> a lot of my courses, I include it with it. So if you purchase any of my courses, which are on my Instagram, I include the link to my community. Um, and then I offer it for like $19.99 per month. Okay. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> I'm an open book. Anybody that knows me, it's like, ask me a question. You know, if I know the answer, I'm going to tell you. If I don't, I'm going to put you in touch with somebody. So yeah. I just want to be a resource to help people. Any, you know, if, someone, if there's a suggestion as far as something that, you know, want people want to do in the group. I'm open to doing that. It's like, like I said, I just want to be a resource and I want to help people to succeed. Now, can you tell people a little bit about the course you have for small business owners? So I have a couple courses. One of them most recently that I released, it's called um, Taxes for E-Trade and Online Businesses. Yeah. And that's kind of the, the the presentation that I did in DC. I think yeah, I did it. <laughs> on that one a little bit, but just just things to help small business owners to you know to think about. We talk about entity structure, we talk about deductions, we talk about tax planning, kind of what it is. Um, I think we talk about some tax strategies, and then I offer a couple spreadsheets in there. I want to say there's like a spreadsheet which I'm not totally cool on Excel, but I'd rather you have an Excel spreadsheet where you're tracking your income and expenses than have Mm -hmm. nothing at all. So there's an Excel spreadsheet in there. And um, I'm not sure what else. I know there are some other, like um, there's a chart of accounts in there. So like Mm -hmm. when you go to set up your QuickBooks, there's a chart of accounts in there. And then there's like some other little like workbooks so that you can like jot down things that you would need to know for taxes. So it's important to not wait until the last minute. You know, you kind of, you want to, as a business owner, you want to be more involved in it. <clears throat> and I know a lot of companies, a lot of people that are doing bookkeeping and working with new business. I mean, you said, was it 4.4 new, new 4.4 4 million. million new business owners. Yeah. So there are, there are, there are a lot of bookkeepers and CPAs that are sitting there like, oh my goodness, you know, we have to teach these, you know, these new business owners because they don't know. So yeah. there are a lot of, you know, companies out there that are helping to educate and help people get set up. So it's the same thing. Um, just any resources in there so that you can start tracking your information, gathering all your information, making sure that you have like your organization documents. Like, there's even some of that in there. It's like, um, like a checklist for what you need to to gather as an S corporation for your tax return, what you need to gather for a partnership um, and an LLC. So like having your organization documents, your EIN, you know, bank statements, you know, we like to look at the bank statements because we want to verify that what you're telling us is correct, Mm -hmm. you know, and then we're also looking for things that you may not have told us that could be beneficial to you. So, So we ask we ask those questions like you know we're gonna we're gonna look on your bank statements like oh well there's four thousand dollars for American Express but you know what was that for you know yeah. so just just I think it's I think it's a good resource um, and it's not that that um, how would you say it it's not outrageously priced I believe no. it's like ninety seven dollars no, you know so there's yet. a couple I I, I did another. Um, like a webinar. So I did a webinar on tax planning. That's on my Instagram. Um, mm-hmm. It's free where I talk for like 20 minutes or so about tax planning. A um, couple other things on there. I did a basis of business bookkeeping. There's like a replay that may have gone up. I don't know. But so many things. Like, <laughs> I, I have a, I have someone that's kind of being involved in my digital products. Yeah. I keep telling them, like, you handle that part. I'll handle this part. <laughs> You know, I'll just, I'll create the course. I'll talk about it. You, you sell it. So <laughs> still working on that part of it, but yeah. 
Okay. Now I have I'm ask I'm asking for a friend who may be watching this. Uh-huh. Is there a discount you can give to the Kaizen watchers? Of course. Okay. All right. Awesome. So the, the code will be Kaizen, K-A-I-Z-E-N. Kaizen. Then, yeah, K-A-I-Z-E-N. And the, the the surprise is that when you type it in, it's when you find out the discount. Because we don't lock in because we don't know. So the point is, is that you'll find out the amount of the discount when, when you, you discount when you code go Kaizen. It. K A I Z E N. Thank me later. Yes. Thank you, Marjorie. You're welcome. <laughs> I will definitely go in and set that up for you. Yes. And feel free, you know, to reach out to ask questions. You know, I get a lot of DMs. If you want to just have a conversation, book a consultation, I offer those. Um, I feel it's reasonably priced. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and even people that I've connected with, it's like they always reach out and, and send emails. My clients, they have my cell phone number. You know, so I get messages, I get text messages all the time, you know. Here's the other aspect of it, Marjorie, that I don't think you may realize, but for so many people who have started their businesses and a lot of them, a lot of them have started as a side hustle, Mm -hmm. started to make it official, Mm -hmm. got an entity formation, things like that. Mm -hmm. Now they're, they're, they're mingled, they're married and they feel so much shame, stress and guilt. Mm -hmm. And they don't think, oh, I don't even know where to start. You're the first person who I'm like, you should follow her. You're mm-hmm. the first page that I think of. Mm-hmm. And I follow a lot of people who are different CPAs, but it's about how you explain things mm-hmm. and the fact that you approach tax planning and education from an angle that is easy to understand and makes people feel like, oh, I can I can get this. I, get this. I can get this. That makes me feel good. That's huge, Marjorie. Yeah. Thank that's you. Huge. <laughs> that's what I mean. It's a public service. It really mm-hmm. and truly is a public service mm-hmm. because if people take the time to take heed to the information that you're sharing, you will literally change the trajectory of your business and your life because no life. one likes to get locked up and no one, you know, you don't want to get in, in trouble with the IRS. You don't want to get in trouble with the IRS, right? They're not nice. Like- <laughs> and, and you want to be you proactive, be right? It's like, how much, how much more money could you keep in your pocket? If you're doing things correctly, you know, compared Mm -hmm. to just waiting until the last minute. And then, you know, with that one, um, don't ever be afraid um, to to ask a question. You know what I mean? It's like, I think it's humbling to say that you need help. So just ask for help. If you don't understand something, I don't understand. You know, I, I would I would tell people, you know, like I call and I talk to somebody about something and I just tell them, say, you know, I'm sorry, I don't understand this. You know, can you can you help me to understand? Mm. You know what I mean? Help me to understand what it is that's going on. And and with that, don't ever be afraid if you get a notice from the IRS. Don't ignore it. You know, I've had people that have done that too. It's like, oh, well, they say they're gonna garnish my check because I didn't do this. And so then you just don't do anything with the letter. Yeah. And then come to find out, it's like, had you responded to the letter, you may not have owed them that much money. Or even if you owe them that much money, it wouldn't have taken as long to pay it off. And then, you know, it's just, it's just all these different things. It's like, don't, don't be afraid of the IRS. And they're, you know, some of them can be um, unreasonable or, you know, they're people. Yeah. But for the most part, they're willing to help you and answer your questions. Yeah. So don't don't be afraid of any notice. Don't don't be afraid if you haven't done anything. It's like if you haven't done anything, do it now. You know, the the, the perfect perfect time to start is now. Yeah. The now for time. someone who is they started their business this year. Um, even though this recording is happening in mm-hmm. November. <laughs> right. For people who are watching this now. Um what are some things they can do now? Because as far as I'm concerned, I thought, mm-hmm. and I love talking to Marjorie. Mm-hmm. I thought, well, you know what? It's November. We're, no, it's not too over. late. It's too late. However, too late. what do you say mm-hmm. to that, Marjorie? It's not too late. This is now is the time when you need to be making sure that you know how much you've made, you know what you're anticipating paying, and you still have six weeks you know, let's even say the month of December in order to make some changes that will affect your 2021 tax return. 2022 come January, you don't really have that. But for 2021, you still have some time in order to make some changes. There are people who do tax planning on December 31st. 
You know, what? they're making, they're doing things like, oh, I need to do this, I need to do this on December 31st because that's the last day in order to do it. So wow. it's not too late. So my recommendation would be to, you know, if you don't know how much you've made, gather all that information together, um, you know, summarize it, kind of get an idea and then see what it's looking like. <clears throat> Especially if there's a big difference between 2020 and 2021, you know, you really want to talk to somebody to make sure that you have that information. You know, you you know how to plan for it, even if it's a matter of just putting the money aside, you know, for the taxes that you're going to have to pay. That's a good one that we didn't touch on. Uh, yeah, we need to go back there. But, you know, <laughs> you know, putting money aside for the taxes that you're going to have to pay. So even if you're not doing tax planning, say, for instance, someone who made, um, you know, you made one hundred thousand dollars in your business this year. Mm -hmm. That's not all your money. Yeah. Some of that is going to go to tax. So if you're not going to pay it, send it to the IRS, you know, as an estimate, you need to at least put aside 25 to 30 percent of that. Yeah. You know, so that you have that money available when it comes time to pay tax. Yeah. So with that as well, I also want to speak to, can you tell I'm going to cut? Because I know too many, too many people, too many people, Marjorie, I know you know them too, who they really don't understand that they must stop commingling their funds. Mm -hmm. So people still have time to stop the bad habit of commingling mm -hmm. the funds. Mm -hmm. You can still start now, right? Start your Pretty business bank account now mm -hmm. for sometimes zero, sometimes five bucks. Marjorie has to <laughs> <laughs> Marjorie. <laughs> start mm -hmm. now. Start and, now. And then at least now go back and look at all of your previous transactions in your personal accounts that you know for fact were related mm -hmm. to business. Mm -hmm. And switch them to your business account. Yes. And uh, if those are reoccurring expenses, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for your one-off transactions, what should someone do in terms of documentation for that? Just make sure that you have the documentation and that you know that it's a business expense. Like a receipt, you mean? Like a receipt gotcha. or preferably a receipt or sometimes people will use a bank statement. Um, it's recommended that you have the receipt because certain transactions on a bank statement doesn't necessarily mean that it's a business expense. Yeah. So, but if you have the detailed information, then you can you can um, you can prove that that's what it was. Mm -hmm. So just keep track of that information so that you have to give to the person when they prepare your tax return. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. But but even if you're not doing tax planning, now is a good time to get things set up so that come January one you can just start doing things like you're supposed to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah. Okay. So people need to know that they can find Marjorie at where? I am on um, Instagram at um, MLMCPA. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, Don't forget I, about your podcast. My podcast. <laughs> I do have a podcast. It's Here. called um, it's called the CPA Lady Podcast, mm -hmm. um, and I'm gonna say that with yeah, I'll tell you what I started. Again. But the CPA <laughs> Lady Podcast, and then I'm also on YouTube as Marjorie McPike CPA, LinkedIn Marjorie McPike CPA. Um, I think the same thing on Facebook, so you can you can always find me. Okay. At Twitter at Marjorie McPike. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna transition. Mm -hmm. Here's a good questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to transition. And now I get to talk to Marjorie. Not Marjorie, the CPA, not Marjorie, the phenomenal woman, professional. I get to speak with Marjorie because Marjorie, even though you have had years of experience as a CPA professionally, an illustrious career, I've been stalking you on LinkedIn. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, in, was it this year or was it in 2020? That 2020. You, in 2020. Mm -hmm. First of all, let's backpedal. Mm -hmm. How many years were you working at your previous facility before you started your own business? I was there for five years. They just made five years. Mm -hmm. Okay. And overall though, professionally, you have been working as a CPA um, for how long? 17 years. Since 2003. Mm -hmm. 17 years. Mm -hmm. Well, no, well, as a CPA for 
14 years. So I was, I was licensed in 2007. I worked in public accounting, public accounting since 2003. Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 17 years of a stellar career. Mm -hmm. I, I want to use all the coinage. You had that good job with the good benefits. <laughs> 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 With the good benefits, Marjorie. <laughs> <laughs> and you decided to walk away. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? I walked away because um, I felt that there was more opportunity for me in an, another area. Mm -hmm. So I had been asked many times, I've been told many times by people that I should go out on my own. <clears throat> and I always felt that I wasn't ready or it wasn't time, it wasn't time. And most recently, about an hour, about a year before I left my previous firm, someone had asked me to come and work for them as a tax manager and build their tax practice. And I said that it wasn't time. I said, I, I felt though God had me in a holding pattern. Mm. And I would tell people that it's like, I felt that I was in a holding pattern. It was, you know, I had this, this plaque on my computer that said, be still and know that I am God. Mm -hmm. And so I just felt that it wasn't time for me to move. So we go through 2020 and um, I become more active on Instagram and I see a lot of people making money, a lot of money. And I'm like, Ooh, you guys don't know what to expect. You need some information. So I wrote a course. That was my first course. It was understanding my taxes, um, for individuals. It's called understanding my taxes. And then the, the name title has kind of changed to how to file my taxes. And that one kind of talks about, you know, it goes over what to expect as a business owner when it hits your tax return. So like the different entity types and everything. Mm -hmm. So I did that one and I had to make a decision. And my decision was promote my course or stay where I was at my job. Why was that an ultimatum for you? Because in public accounting, you're not, you're, it's every, anything that's not related to the job is, is a conflict of interest in a sense. So it's like they didn't want, I, it wasn't that I could promote me in a sense and still be an employee there. I mm. had to make a choice which one I wanted to do. And at that time I had written the course, I had started my podcast. I was, um, I was just excited about doing things and meeting, meeting great people, you know, yeah. a, a totally different environment. There's a whole world out there on Instagram and I just decided and I felt that it was just time for me to make a change. Mm. And so I said that I just decided to leave and, and go out on my own. I said that if I was going to be an employee, I wanted to be an employee in a different environment that would allow me to do the things that I wanted to do as well as work for someone. Mm. So that's what I did. And, and it's interesting because it's been almost a year and, um, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying meeting the people. I'm enjoying being creative. Of course, it's a lot of hard work because yeah. I'm on my own and I'm starting from scratch and I'm building clients and trying to find clients. And a lot of the clients that I'm dealing with, you know, I, I was telling somebody, it's like, I'm, I've been working in, in corporate dealing with, you know, million dollar tax returns and 754 elections. And, you know, I'm sitting here explaining to people about, you know, um, <laughs> deducting meals or, yeah. <laughs> You know, it, it, there's a difference. Different but, areas. <laughs> it's like I'm on different spectrums. Like, can you just get a business bank account, right? But <laughs> but yeah. it's 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 more rewarding. I enjoy mm -hmm. the people that I'm having the opportunity to work with. I'm enjoying the connections. I'm enjoying sharing all of my knowledge. You know, um, I, I've been to school for many years. You know, I didn't just go to get my degree right out of high school. I mean, I actually started, but then I got married and then I got divorced and, you know, went back and, you know, went to school full time or part time while working full time. And then I got my CPA license and then I got my master's in tax, you know, so I've been doing a lot and it's just nice to be able to connect with people and share all of the knowledge that I have. 
Mm-hmm. So, and anything that I don't know, I'm willing to research it. Like I said, I know people, yeah. um, but I just, I just, I probably took that all around the world, but it's no, just, you did not. <laughs> you did not. But, but I, I just, I felt that it was, it was just time. It was yeah. time. It was time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you take me back to the month, your first month as an entrepreneur? That first month where you don't have to put on a suit or whatever you wore to commute to your job. There's no meetings. It's just you. That one's kind of interesting because I did something. um, So when I was transitioning from out of my job, I had this opportunity to go and work part time for this firm um, for um, I'm say, if we're into it, you know, Intuit is always looking for tax experts. Uh-huh. And so I'm like, oh, this sounds cool. So my first month as an entrepreneur, I'm balancing working for, so January of 2021, right? Uh-huh. I'm working for Intuit part-time, which I thought was supposed to be like 20 hours a week to where they're wanting like 40 to 45 hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> and, <I'm> like, <laughs> and so I'm going through dealing with that one and then trying to get all my systems in place and going and growing and and getting clients and stuff like that. So it was a little bit stressful, but I heard, you know, in the back of my head, it's like, it was like, I told you to quit your job. I didn't tell you to quit. Now go find a new one. So I didn't tell you to go find a new job. So that stress is on you. That's not on me. (laughs) Yeah. But I, I I made it through it and, you know, it's all been rewarding. I think just knowing that I'm kind of, I'm in control of my schedule, you know, you guys see me, you know, see me on Instagram posting pictures of, you know, I was out at the park with my grandbaby at four o'clock on a Monday afternoon. You know, that's what it's all about to me, going to pick them up for school or going to take them to school, you know, just being able to be a little bit more relaxed than I was when I was in corporate. So, I mean, if I sit here and if I have to work until midnight because I didn't do something during the day, that's on me. But I'm enjoying having that flexibility and not having to get up and rush to 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 be on someone else's clock and to have that pressure. So now now that you have been in this role of entrepreneurship for close to a year. It's a, oh, no, it's over a year. It's, over it's a year almost now. a year. It'll be a yeah, year okay. in December. Mm-hmm. OK. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think that the narrative behind entrepreneurship is over glamorized at times? No, Hmm. I don't. I, I, I think it's, you have to be willing to put in the work. You have to realize that it's up to you. Um, It is a mind shift check, mind shift, mindset shift, because I had that happen. I remember um, we were having a meeting Cause I'm a part of um, the Todd Capital Mastermind. I have to always yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah, right. You better wrap it. <laughs> <laughs> but we were having a meeting and I told them, I was like, I had an aha moment mm. where I was like, you know what? Maybe I need some steady income. Maybe I need to go and get a job where I make so much per hour, you know, just for whatever reason. Yeah. And then I was like, well, no, I said, that's not what you want to do. It's like, you need to figure out how many clients you need to bring on in order to cover that. So it's a mindset shift and it's the freedom and it's the putting the systems in place so that you can do the things that you want to do. So um, over glamorized, it it may not be for everybody. You just have to be willing to put in the work and know what it is that you want. And I think that entrepreneurship isn't for everybody. I think sometimes people need to go and work for someone else, you know, because of the skills that you learn or the discipline that you have or just just be the exposure, you know, just being exposed to different people because it's a different world. You are by yourself, yeah. you know, you're by yourself. So you yeah. have to be able to know how to get that, the other things that you need in order to grow professionally. Now, I'm so happy you said that because it flows perfectly into my next question. Mm-hmm. This. Every, ha- what's the saying? Behind every great man is a great woman. Mm-hmm. And in this situation, behind the great Charles Oglesby is the phenomenal <laughs> mom, Marjorie McPike, right? So <laughs> uh, people are like, Charles who? Todd Billion. What's, what's the name? Todd Capital. 
Todd Capital, Todd Billion. Yes. He's Todd Billion. Billion. (laughs) The beautiful thing about the work that your son has been doing over the years is that, and he deserves his flowers too. Don't worry, I'm going to have him on next. Because the truth is, is that in many ways, he has inspired so many other people Mm -hmm. to take the courage into the entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Because it does take courage. It does take courage. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. It really, really does. Mm -hmm. So my question to you, Marjorie, is that how has your son influenced your perspective on entrepreneurship? He has, um, Charles has always told me that I should be on my own. He's one of the ones that's been wanting me to do it for a long time, a long time. So he's been extremely happy that I've done it. Um, I think he's a big support. So... Mm -hmm. He's a big support. He's a big um, mentor. Um, how would you say it? Motivator, yeah. encourager, brainstorm. Um, I told him we should do a podcast on just the conversations that we have because some yeah. people are just like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I would listen. Do it. <laughs> we, we have intense conversations. So, but, um, and then seeing him do it, you know, it's kind of like, because I've seen you do it and I know how, 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 how hard he works. Um, I know that it's possible. I don't want to work as hard as he does. He, he goes 10 X. I think I just want to do two X, you know, <laughs> cause I've done the 10 X before. I don't want to do that. But, um, but just seeing him do it. And, and like I said, he, he's a big, he's a big supporter. He's an encourager. Any question that I have regarding anything, you know, I'm, I can just run it by him. And yeah, so many gems are dropped just in, in basic conversation. So, yeah. yeah. And the beautiful thing about your son is the fact that I can personally attest and watching people over time, you can really see when people, when the words line up with their mm-hmm. actions, right? That's true alignment. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I've always observed and appreciated is the fact that he sincerely wants everyone to win. He wants everyone to win. Yeah. Yeah. He does. The, the man is a unicorn. Like, <laughs> that's he wants everyone to win. He wants yeah. everyone to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He gets and, that one, honestly. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I want everybody to be successful. It's like, let's make it happen. Let's get this done. Come on. <laughs> but yeah, he wants everyone to win. He he has a big heart, you mm-hmm. know, and he's willing to do what he has to do in order to help people. So, yeah, so, big things are coming. Yeah, yeah. It will only have, that's the beautiful thing though. When you create a community from the source of giving, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it naturally comes back. It comes back mm-hmm. tenfold. Naturally. Mm -hmm. Naturally. Yeah. I know people personally who have started businesses based off of the tools and resources that your son has provided. Wow. Yeah. That's that's why it's perfect now that you have been so willing to step on the scene to share your expertise Mm. because now it goes from having a side business to growing something that could one day, one day be a conglomerate if, if they so choose. Yeah. Yeah. It is yeah. so huge. Yeah. It, it yeah. It it's cool. We we do work a lot together. I I'm I'm involved in all of those projects. <laughs> Sometimes more than I want to, but yeah, I'm involved in all those. But you know, it's and it's true, you know, it's like you work together, you have um a common goal, you know. Yeah. Some one person you kind of build off of the strengths of each person, you know, he thinks he thinks finance, you know. I always told him it's like, you know. It's funny, like you should be a lawyer. And then it's like, you need to work with money, you know, when he was growing up. And so what does he do? Right. <laughs> you know? But he thinks like that. So it, it's it's a blessing, you know, yeah. it's a blessing. So just just looking forward to things. So yeah. looking forward to 2022, mm-hmm. after experiencing your first full year of entrepreneurship, what is one thing you learned about yourself? And what's one thing you actually look forward to learning? One thing I learned about myself is um, maybe I can do it. <laughs> I, I can do it. I did it. Sometimes I, I look back and I'm like, wow, we're in November. I've been doing this for almost a year. Yeah. And, you know, um, so maybe that I, that I can do it, that I'm, I'm um, I don't know, more capable than, maybe, I'm not going to say more capable you know, because I, I never wanted to do it because I didn't want to work so hard. 
Yeah. So now it's just a matter of figuring out ways to make it more streamlined so I don't work so hard. Gotcha. Um, so maybe that's it. Just that's, you know, yeah, you can do it. And I don't know, the sky is the limit. And what I don't do you look forward to learning? What do I look forward to learning? Just more on how to help people, mm. how to be able to share the knowledge, how to be able to get through to people on the importance of their business finances. It's like, how do, just how do, we, how do we get there? What do I need to do? What do I need to say? What do I need to, you know, how do I need to present it so yeah. they can get it so that the light bulb goes off and we start doing things because there are a lot of businesses out there that have the potential to scale, to scale. You know, there are a lot of businesses, you know, great business ideas. It's like, how do we just get the other systems in place so that we can do all that? And so that they see the benefit of having that team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that it's not just, hey, let me go buy this course and put it down. But it's like that you actually grasp the knowledge and grow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, to be honest, you're you're already on that path. I see it. I see it. Because in... I don't, use my words wisely when I say this, but <laughs> there are many people, you, people will decide for themselves whether or not they are serious or whether or not they're playing a business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You will decide for yourself whether or not you're going to stay in the minor leagues or you're going to step into the major, major, major leagues. leagues. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. That's really on them. Mm -hmm. The beautiful thing is that if they're willing to step into the major leagues, they recognize that they need to get a qualified trainer for success. Right. I'm right. listening to, um, I'm re-listening to a book by Tim Grover, one of the traders of Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. And the beautiful thing about them is that, or him, Tim Grover, the book is called Relentless. It's an excellent book, by the way. I think I heard that. Mm -hmm. Excellent book. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is, is that for both of them, he he explained how the reason why Kobe and Michael were very much the same in terms of mentality, because they recognized that in order to be the best it requires that you don't rest on your laurels. Right. It requires that you don't say, well, I am just, I had this natural prowess and I'm just mm -hmm. going to do that. That's right. not good enough to succeed. Right, right. So you have to put in the work. The yeah. Extra, the practice. The practice. And mm -hmm. so for many people, if they really want to grow in business and scale, mm -hmm. you have to stop having minor league habits mm. if you want major league results. Well. Okay. <laughs> you, 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 you that. It does not make sense. Tweet that out, Marjorie. Yeah. <laughs> Tweet that out for me, Marjorie. Just quote me. Because I'm not on Twitter like that. But it, it's, <laughs> it's the truth. People don't understand that. But if they take the time to understand and study the greats, if you study right. the greats, you mm -hmm. recognize that they leverage the experience of experts. Of experts, yes. Yes, they had a team. Everybody mm -hmm. asks about Donald Trump, and I tell them they he had a team. He had a, he team. Had a team. He had. A I'm team. not surprised. The man had a team. Mm -hmm. He had a team. He yes. had he had people in and out of his books asking him questions all yes. the time. Right? He was yes. transparent in the sense when it came to his books yes. in order for them to get him the 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 tax results that he wanted or that benefit him. But people don't want to do that. No. And the other aspect that I look forward to talking to you about at a later date is people only think, unfortunately, they only think of tax taxes in terms of how much I have to pay, how much I have to pay, how much I have to pay. Mm -hmm. However, if you are open to having a new conversation right, and being willing to shift your mindset, you'll understand that tax planning is how the 1% became the 1%. Yes. Yes. But it is a wealth building tool when you it's understand a wealth building it. Tool, right. It's a wealth building tool. It is. It's just it that when, if you're on, I'm just going to use my little Robert Kiyosaki. Go ahead. You know that, <laughs> right. Depending on the quadrant you're in and the, mm -hmm. the quadrants here, I don't know if anyone mm -hmm. read that book, mm -hmm. depending on the quadrant that you're in, will will basically dictate how much taxes you end up paying. Pay. Right. That's all it is. So if mm -hmm. we're going to figure out how to switch quadrants to go from the money earning side to the money building side with business, then our tax liabilities become less. Yes. And that is the ultimate wealth building hack. Mm -hmm. I like the way you put that. I'm, I'm, yeah. Take it all. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but we got to get this message out here, Marjorie. You, you do. You do. You have to shift 
your quadrants. You have to go from being just an earner to a business owner, yeah. you know, and start tracking your expenses and knowing how that's going to affect you. There are yeah. so many things that you can do, you know, how, how can every expense that you have be a business expense? Yeah. Right. You need a new computer. How can your new computer be a business expense? You need a new cell phone. How can your cell phone be a business expense? You know, some people are doing things where they run out their house for business meetings, yep. you know? And then I like to think about the fact that people think, oh my goodness, can you really save that much money? How do the wealth become wealthy by saving on taxes? And I always say to them, do you realize that when you're born, your parents pay a tax. Do you realize for every dollar that your parents earn, they pay tax on it. Mm -hmm. You pay taxes when you spend money, mm -hmm. you pay taxes right. when you earned money, right. you pay taxes when you die. You, you, you do. pay taxes for every you monetary do. transaction. How mm -hmm. much money would you have right now mm -hmm. if you were able to have every tax penny you have ever paid? Right, right. I know for a fact, personally, at my right. 37 years, I would probably be a millionaire by now. Mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. every single penny of tax I have it. never paid mm -hmm. for the money I earned, for the money that I paid for something. Right. Everything. Right. Your property tax, your your sales tax, your everything. Yeah. That's and see, too, when you talk about the wealth, it's like tax planning, it's not just for you know your own individual return because that tax planning can be for setting up for generational wealth as well. God. You know, Marjorie, you had to come back on again. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to talk for two hours. <laughs> it, it's important. You use your resources. Talk to people. You know, you you talk to people. Listen to podcasts. Read yeah. books. You know, learn about the tax side of it because it's not all scary. Yeah. You know, and learn how to manage your business finances. And I will I will second that and say it's not scary when you learn it, it is liberating. It's liberating. Yes. Yes. Because you start looking at things a different way. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Can you take a vacation? Right. That's what they call it now, a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> how can you how can you make your vacation a business trip? Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's this, it's and you have to thing, have the conversation. Yeah. Especially because in this day and age. It is nothing short of miraculous. We are both sitting here in our homes in different mm -hmm. states recording a live broadcast on a platform that I monetize as a business. Awesome. What a time to be alive. Right. We're living in a time where if someone wanted to, they can go ahead and create an entity, get an EIN, start a domain, get their business started in maybe 24 hours in the comfort of their home in their pajamas. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. That's, exactly. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you are willing to do those things and you want to succeed at it, to me, mm -hmm. I know this might be harsh words here, it is idiotic not to take the time to invest in protecting and growing the money that you are creating. Yes. In your business. Yes. It's flat out idiotic. Yes. So that's it. what I that's what I mean, Marjorie. <laughs> Either they're going to stay in the minor leagues or they're going to step it up. Step it up <laughs> and go to the major league. Right? Go to the major leagues. <laughs> that's why, Marjorie. Don't worry. Your clients are your clients. Mm -hmm. Like they'll come to you. They'll, they'll come, come to you. And the mm -hmm. others, unfortunately, will be that percentage that were not wired to win. They were wired right. to lose. Because right. It all right. starts here. It, it starts there in the mind. Mm -hmm. it all you have to have the mindset. Mind. Yep. It you have to have the mindset to win, to take it to the next level. And it, and it's all going to help you, whether it's, you know, um, like you said, it's liberating, you know, just to have the conversation, just to just yeah. to know what different things that you can do, you know, in order to help you with your business finances, with your taxes. It's it, it all goes hand in hand, you know, just to be educated. Anytime you learn something, it's like you sit down and you pick up a book and you read for five minutes, you're going to be that much better. Yeah. Right. It doesn't even have to be five hours. It's like it could be five minutes. Just read for five minutes. <laughs> learn something. So just yeah. read it, you know, just Google what deductions, what are business deductions? You know, it's yeah. going to help you. And 
I am also going to ask for some people, because I get that all the time, as much as I am a voracious reader, I understand that people are not. However, I do understand that my platform is all about mindset and understanding mm -hmm. how to hack your mind and understand yourself better so you can leverage your mind mm -hmm. to do great things. Right. That being said, I know that there's power in conversations and there's mm -hmm. also power in just being in the room to hear just those being in the room. Just being in the room. Just being in the room. Just yes. being in the room. Just being in the room. Mm -hmm. You have your community. Mm -hmm. your Facebook community where people can go ahead and be in that room mm -hmm. because sometimes you don't know what you don't know. Right. You hear the conversation. Right. Right. Go, oh my God. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I could write out X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Being that in that special. room. And here you are creating this community at a nominal fee because mm -hmm. you want everybody to win. Everybody to That's win. where your son gets it from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because you want everybody to win. Mm -hmm. And you can ask questions in there, too. It's like, I'm not going to, you know, no, you can't ask that question. Like, <laughs> you should ask the question. You know, that's what it's there for. It's a yeah. community. How can we help each other? So yeah. so How one last I time, can, can you tell the people where they can find you at? I don't want anyone to miss out on this opportunity. So I am on Instagram at MLMCPA. Um, sorry, <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> Let me help her out, y'all. So Thank our link is Marjorie, Marjorie, Marjorie McPike. <laughs> Twitter, it's Marjorie McPike. YouTube, it's Marjorie McPike. I do have my podcast, the CPA Lady Podcast, yes. where I speak with other accounting and tax professionals where we're talking about, you know, small business taxes, accounting, bookkeeping, just different things. I've had a variety of people in there. I'm trying to get through um, 25 episodes by the end of the year. That's my goal. Ooh, okay. So this has been a, a um, well, I started like November of last year. So I've had some challenges. Um, but if I get through 25 episodes by the end of the year, that would be awesome. And um, I'm on Instagram. Yeah. Find me, my website, marjorellemcpikecpa.com. There's a free download, get on my mailing list. Um, a lot of great things are happening. You know, systems are, are kicking in. So a lot of great things are happening, just sharing information. Um, I'll put the um, I'll put the code up yeah. pays in, so that you can purchase the course and anything that I can do to help, let me know. And thank you so much for having me. It was it was fun. <laughs> On so beautiful ones. All of that wonderful information will be down in the description box below. Make sure since you're already on the YouTube platform, don't waste time. Take action now by going ahead and following Marjorie's YouTube channel page. What's your channel again? Marjorie McPike CPA. CPA. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'll have the link to her YouTube channel linked below. Don't forget to get all of her goodies with the fun discount code Kaizen, K-A-I-Z-E-N. And until next time, beautiful ones, te amo. Besos. Ciao. <laughs> awesome. <laughs>